All right, welcome back everybody. Got a good one today. So today we're gonna to talk about the difference, if there is any, of speed and our form in running and our step rate or our cadence. Some awesome questions lately about this. Hopefully you guys have some aha moments and it sparks a little bit of a different thought process in your mind. So first we have to define what is a stride. We talk about overstriding. What is a stride? We get so caught up with what's going on in front of us, we forget that there's a whole part of the back of the stride. So what is a stride? It's the distance between two steps, our right and our left, or our left and our right. Here's three different speeds, walking, jogging, and sprinting or running faster, three miles per hour. You'll notice that the distance between each step, it's a smaller stride. What dictates the difference between a jog and a walk, we've talked about previously, is there's this period of flight time. No matter how small, with jogging, there's this period where both feet are off the ground. Versus walking, there's always one point of contact on the ground. So what happens, we get a little bit of an increase in our stride when we start jogging or five miles per hour. And then we go to running, we can see our stride does increase the distance between each step, but the distance and where it increases is behind us, not in front of us. Let's say that again. The distance of where we step in front of us is the same. We still wanna land as close to underneath our center of mass as possible. It doesn't matter which speed I'm going, walking, sprinting. If I land this far out in front of me, it's still gonna slow me down. Now where it does increase is behind us. So sometimes we think we gotta go faster, we take a bigger step out in front. That's not true and I got some good illustrations to, to prove that or to show you that. Where it does increase is behind us. So what makes up this distance is we'll see the stride length or heel height behind us increase. So first things first, let's go over a video where I'm running at eight, 10 and 11 miles per hour. So you see right here at eight miles per hour, where I'm landing is the same. I have that green line, that's where how high my heel's going up. At each subsequent speed, my heel gets a little bit higher, which dictates a further stride behind me. And we'll see here at 11 miles per hour, same st story. Where I'm landing in front of me stays the same. It's the heel height or the stride length behind that gets a little bit higher, a little bit longer. So I got a really good depiction where I overlap the two. So here I took, and I had to change the speed of eight miles per hour and 11 to make it so it goes around the same time. I overlapped one on top of the other. So you'll see here, same overlap, same distance of where I'm stepping in front of me, still going forward, but you'll notice that the distance, not only behind the stride length increases and the height of my heel at 11 versus eight miles per hour, that's where the difference is. I'm still landing the same difference in front of me. And people will say about, what about sprinting? Like sprinters, Think about where they're starting and how horizontal. When they're pushing off, they're trying to go forward. They're not wasting time going up and down. So the difference between 11 miles per hour and eight is the stride length behind me. Now, what else changes? So we talk about what doesn't change is where we land in front of us. The stride does increase behind us, but also think about your steps per minute or your cadence. Is it Should it be 180 at uh, six miles per hour and at 10 miles per hour? Another really good question. So I'm gonna make an analogy to a car. So think about a car. You've got different gears, one through five, whatever. We're gonna make it a little bit more simple, one through three. You've got your RPMs or revolutions per minute on the car. You've got your 170, 175, 180. So it does deviate about five steps per minute for that cadence. But think about the neighborhood versus city versus highway. Our RPMs are gonna to start to go up and then what happens? We switch gears and then it comes back down starts to go up, we switch gears. So what switching gears really is, is our body, we do hit the ground harder. So because we're hitting the ground harder for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, that's gonna help to propel us forward with more power, more speed. So think about that as far as why is the same step rate deviating within about five steps per minute. Same with RPM, same with the car. So we are gonna be hitting that ground harder. But what makes up for that, why it's still around that same time, is because that flight time or that stride is increasing, that's gonna make it so that it's around that same step rate. So to summarize, 
what doesn't change? Where we land in front of us. What does change is our stride length increases behind us. And also we do hit the ground harder, which is gonna create more force going forward. So those are the big similarities and differences between running different speeds. We'll talk about in a future post about running efficiency and running economy and how your speed should look very different at eight versus 11 miles per hour. If someone's doing 11 miles per hour of work, going eight miles per hour, if that will make sense later, it's wasted time and energy. So hope you guys enjoy this. Questions, comments, post below.